Yo, it's the Rap Radar Podcast. My name is Brian B. Dot Miller. B. Dot Acelia Wilson. What's up, baby? Feeling great, man. This feels very rare right here. Super rare. To get these guys <laughs> together for an interview. We got mm. the super producer, Alchemist, and super rapper, Rock Marcy. What's going on, guys? What's up? What's up? Chilling, super producer, chilling. too. Super producer. <laughs> hey, hey, let's be clear. <laughs> super producer Alchemist, too. I saw that you tweeted that this project, Elephant Man's Bones, is the best shit we ever did. What makes this project between you and Rock so special? Oh, man. I mean, it's been like at least 10 years coming mm. for me. I mean, I think some of the first records we did was probably at least 10 years old. Yeah, 2011. Easily. Yeah, Easily. and you know, we could speak forever about how great he is, you know, but I feel like from the first days that we linked, I always had a, a goal. Mm. Like, yo, I felt like if we could make a whole plate, you know what I'm saying? And over the years, mm -hmm. we've done a lot. Yeah, Like you could actually pull them together yeah. and make the a nice compilation. And we dropped, stuff, yeah. mm -hmm. tw you know, uh, craft singles mm -hmm. and a lot of like records that I feel were notable, but I always felt like, man, if we could put this together and I feel like where it landed mm. is to me, like I feel our best. And that says a lot because, you know, yeah. I, his discography is insane. Yeah. So I, I I just feel for us, and I told As him. Yours. And, and <laughs> I told him when we were making it, I said, once we finish it, we won. And when we get it to where it needs to be, and he and I are feel like, yo, this yeah. meets the mark of how we feel we should be at right now in our so career. what was it like making it once you finally got in the trenches and was working on it? I mean, it, for me, it was fun. You know what I'm mm. saying? But it was also a, a challenge. Mm. Cause you know, he makes some of the best beats. Right. So for me, it was also like to try to find a way where I could make a soundscape for it that's worthy f for what he does, but also bring something else to the table. You know what I'm saying? So, mm -hmm. but we just, once we buckle down, I mean. So you handled all production on this one? Yeah. Mm -hmm. This yeah. was, yeah. I felt like I had to do that yeah. and let rock for one project. It's only right. It's only right. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. You mentioned in the sound, like, uh, like, what was the goal? Like, what were you trying to achieve sonically with this project? I was I wasn't thinking too much about our past stuff or like our sound, but I was like, I listened to both our discographies, and I was just thinking about first and foremost, I got to give him stuff that makes him want to write. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, so inspire. no matter how it, you know have a certain idea of a color or a, or a style, we really just started because this is my brother, so we mm -hmm. hang out. Mm -hmm. We don't just make music. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. once we <laughs> finally put in motion and we were going to make a record. I just started throwing a lot of music at him. Mm. I mean, a lot. Right. You know what I'm saying? And I could, <laughs> I could trust Rock too. Mm -hmm. So it was like, I threw the sink at him because he told me, "Yo, don't just send me what you think I'm a like." Like just send me tailored beats. Send nah, me. Yeah. Yeah, you know, Load just the clip. go. And, and so you know, and I and I and I and I touched everything damn near, didn't <laughs> I? Mm. And I damn near touched pretty much, everything. Pretty much, pretty much. Like how many Rock? Like. 40? Somewhere around there. We, I think wow. Close to 40 tracks yeah, we, yeah. Wow. we recorded. Somewhere yeah. between 37 yeah, or somewhere wait, like that. This is the moment for the internet. Mm -hmm. Go crazy the idea that they could ever hear these records because mm -hmm. you know, yeah. they want everything. We had Mind a lot of Imagine we had a bunch of music that we already had from like mm. older music yeah. that we already, we're right. talking about, we, we did damn near 40 new joints. Yeah. Mm. Wow. Yeah. And right. we had records over the years that we, we mm -hmm. didn't release either that we were considering. Mm. Yeah. That we could have, you know, mashed together, but we was like for the, for the fans and for what we feel we deserve. Keep it fresh. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because even Rock sometimes, like, he'll have a joint that he cooks, and then maybe a couple years later, he'll send me a new version with a new verse that's better. Mm -hmm. So when records sit around, sometimes he, he might recook it where the, the beat is right, but he'll have, because, mm -hmm. you know, this music, it's our life. So update depending the on, software. Yeah. Mm -hmm. you know <laughs> update like the that. software. You know what I'm saying? Got to update the software. But Rock, your producer as well, like, was it less pressure to allow Alchemist to, like, take the reins, or did you have, like, the itch to kind of... Oh, nah, hell yeah. It was, uh, um, I just knew with Al on the boards, all I had to do was be the best rapper that I could be, you mm. know what I'm saying? So it was like, all right, I ain't got to worry about production and shit like it's that. No so ego. it was like a vacation, you know mm. what I'm saying? I mean, don't get it twisted. We butted heads, like, you know what I'm saying? We butted heads, like, you know what I'm saying? You like, we do it your way, it's going to be a Rock Marcy album, and I was like... Yeah. That's not a bad thing, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But I'm like, yo, I gotta have my flavor. So it's like, you know, but it was still all a pleasure, you know what I'm saying? Nonetheless, like, you know, we 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 making music, so it's there's no one way it could be done. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? His way is right sometimes, my way is right sometimes, yeah. and we just come together. Was there just, a particular you know, song or session that stands out that it clicked like, oh, this is this definitely feels right? Mm -hmm. 
Which one? What's I mean, the, we always worked together. So once we yeah. started just cooking, it was already the first batch was already magic. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? So, but I think once we started, I felt like the first batch that he finally went in on felt more along the lines. I can I can never do what he does, but it felt more like along the lines of something he might be even potentially produced. And that's yeah. when we came like halfway in and we had yeah. a nice batch and I was like, yo, I, I want to try to bring a couple other sounds to the table. Mm -hmm. And he, he, you know, we respect each other so much that I didn't feel like I, I wasn't nervous to say it. I was more like, yo, let me, let me pick mm -hmm. a couple beats. But first of all, if you don't feel it, I don't want you to force it. Yeah. So, but at least pick a couple sounds that, cause at first I just wanted him Rock is a type, just get out of his way. That's how I like to produce for him. Mm -hmm. It's like, make something and get out of his way. Mm -hmm. So may, they call it minimal or whatever yeah. it is. It's not for everybody. Yeah. But for, for me, when I work with him, I'm like, okay, let me get something that when he calls me and it's like, or oh, put the heart emoji on the beat, on, in the text, it's like, all right. Yeah. And he'll say, yo, the pen's moving. Or, you said, right. I only want to see fire emojis when yeah. the that's project it. comes that's out, it. Right? That's it, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> What do you make of like this, like being like on the internet, like the whole how records come out now, and there's so much social media fuel consumption of the music. Like, what do you guys make of that? I mean, it's all good to me. I just feel like it's beautiful that the people we get to hear it directly from the people, and there's no company in the middle saying, "Okay, well, you know, you're doing good in this area, or this and there. <laughs> you know, over here they're feeling you. We're not so much here. They're like, no, nah, I'm getting the feedback live from the people, so you can't beat it. You know what I'm right. saying? And why is this project called The Elephant Man's Bones? Like, what's the meaning behind that title? I mean, you know, I guess to a certain extent feeling like, you know what I'm saying, like an outcast in the game, like, you know what I mean, making this, this raw music for a long time and mm. stuff like that. So it's like, you know, they kind of like treated us like the bad stepkids in the game. So it was like, you know, <laughs> The Elephant Man's Bones. And it's about revealing. If you listen to the album, I'm revealing things. So it's almost like your skeletons yeah. also in your closet. And stuff like that. So, you know, it's 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 you know multi dimensional as far as the meaning. And speaking of multi dimensional, does mm -hmm. this count as a double album because it's like a side A and a side B? <sighs> that, <makes sense. laughs> that was just uh when we put out the original track listen, that okay. was for the vinyl art. Oh, okay. So I think some people thought it was and you know, if if they appreciate it and they listen to it that way, <laughs> hey, cool. You know what I'm saying? But right. uh I don't think that was intentional. Okay, cool. Yeah, but I, I think like the song Elephant Man's Bones, you know what I mean? When yeah. we made that record, I felt like he had never wrote a record like that before. Mm. And I felt like to be to write a record like that, you kind of got to go through the steps he went to and be the place he is. Mm. Right. I've you been know. vulnerable before. No, I'm no, just getting one, I'm getting better that at That one in particular, too. Yeah. Like, because you, you, you admitted on that particular song, uh, you, you got wounds not even a doctor could heal. Like, what are some of those wounds that you were talking about? You know, like your pain and trauma from the past. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I guess they say doctors can heal them, but... You know what I'm saying? I don't feel like that. You know what I'm saying? So mm. a lot of stuff you just never get over. You know, death of close friends and, you know, you know, just your your, your life story. We all got pain and stuff like that that you probably never get over. Mm. Yeah. Even towards the end of the song, you kind of reiterate, I always swore I always was being tested. Like, what are some of those things mm. that you feel like you've been tested on? I mean, um, are we all being tested? I feel like during this journey of life, um, you know, everything is, you know, to make you become a better man or, you know, a better person. So that's how I felt. Like a lot of things like, you know, that happened or whatever or didn't happen or whatever the case may be, mm -hmm. it just pushed me to be greater. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? So that's pretty much, like, put it this way, if I wasn't, um, if the first album, whatever, or the second one was just like, oh, greatly accepted, I might have let off the gas and probably not have been as ill as I am. Mm -hmm. But being <laughs> that, you know what I'm saying, that, you know, cats are still fronting, I got iller and iller, you know what I'm saying? So You even addressed that on Deja Vu, you said, I'm, I feel like I'm often slighted. Mm -hmm. You know, as much mm -hmm. as you're revered, you yeah. still feel like there's, there's still that side of you that's not you feel, yeah, feel definitely. appreciated enough. We talk enough. about stuff like that, like okay, even though it don't, because I've never been a fame person. I don't really care about no damn fame, but um, you know, like if you think about what I've done in this game, for me not to be on like Coachella or some shit mm -hmm. like that, it's like 
what the you, do y'all know y'all you, y'all know the history of what's going on or what what I'm contributing to the culture and stuff like that so you feel like you get slighted by little stuff like mm-hmm. that but it just feed the fire that's all right even on quantum leap you talk about how you at the top of the heap ask your colleagues mm-hmm. I mean it feels like you've been going for a little bit rock so mm-hmm. how have you been able to stay on your a game um I, I, I love what I do mm. you know what I'm saying I love what I do um you know, when you love what you do, you you know, you don't cheat the game. So that's pretty much all it is. I just don't cheat it. You know what I'm saying? I, I take time out to live and get better. Like I said, updating the software, mm. like making sure that I come back a better a better MC than mm. I did last time. That's how I feel like I'm still getting better and better. All about self improvement. Mm-hmm. Like Al, I saw that you tweeted once a couple of weeks ago. Like this rap shit is the lazy river at the water park. You said, let's talk about it. So let's talk about it. Like, we feel like, what do you mean by that? Let's talk about it. Like, w- what does that mean to you? I feel like we in a lazy river. It's like, you know, at Action Park or one of those places and you're just like in an inner tube and just kind of coasting. Yeah, I just had the thought one day, like, you know, I feel like uh, the rap game kind of moves like the lazy river. <clears throat> like, you know, in the park, you got the, the yeah. goes around the water park, you sit in it in the tube. If you get out of it, and go get an ice cream or something and get back in, so you, you're back. You got to swim back up to get to where you're at. Yeah. Mm. And I was saying it to more of a testament of people who stay on the ball. Yeah. So if you let off mm. the gas, this shit is a lazy river. So when you want to get back in, you got to get back in position. You got to mm. swim back up to get back to where you were because mm. the shit keeps moving. Mm. Yeah. It's constantly, that's how I took it. Like it doesn't wait for nobody. The game moves and it, it, when you get out of it, you want to jump back in, you got to get back in position. They not they may not just be with open hands because um, swipe, swipe, swipe. And, and you know, <laughs> yeah, your, your attention it. span is less and you you come, you you fall back and somebody gives a little lesser quality product mm-hmm. that they can, all right, fuck it. You don't got that, let's go here. Yeah. And I was just thinking about that, that well, aspect interesting of it. me too. I was like, I feel like even more, you share, you share the, your love of the culture and your lifestyle with it, not just the music I put, the pop-up shops, the you yeah, know, yeah. limited edition vinyl, like the, you know, the baseball cards, things like that. Talk about how it seems like the things you just love or passionate about has become as much about that as much about the music. Yeah, I yeah. mean, it, it, I think if I had known this 20 years ago, I would have did it then. That's life. You know, I kind of had to go through my stages yeah. of, you know, I think Rock and I both had our versions of messing with major labels, messing with a small company, and just kind of going down the pole until you're like, damn, what's behind door number two, man? Mm. Yeah. Fuck that. What they, what, let's just go see what's behind. Oh, shit, okay. This is cool. All right. And I can just do what I want and kind of implement my ideas. And I feel like <clears throat> when you lock in with the core people who who really fuck with you, mm. you're good. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And and what I really do, and I think both of us, we kind of create product that is something we like. Like if I'm gonna mm. do a merch line, there's something in there that I'm gonna wear. Mm-hmm. And even if they tell me, yo, this is gonna sell better. And even to my own detriment, I, I have to do things that are true to me that I love. Cause you know, then I feel like the people will, will it'll, it'll reciprocate. You know what right. I mean? As far as products go, man, you worked with almost everybody, like Bowley James, Action Bronson, Currency, Freddie Gibbs on these, you know, exclusively produced projects. Yeah. Prodigy, of course. Rock, why do you think rappers like working with this guy so much on these full length projects? Al's a damn dog, man. He's always <laughs> got fire. He's always sitting on shit. You know what I mean? Like Al delivers. Like, you know what I'm saying? Right. You want some ill shit if you if if you rusty or whatever the case may be, it's like, you know, go to the training course. You know mm. what I'm saying? Get what Al, get some of that nasty shit and, you know, get, you know, get back right. Right. Yeah. Al, you had a hell of a year too, man. Appreciate you it. Started off early this year with Benny the Butcher and J. Cole, Johnny Peace Caddy. Yeah, yeah. And you, you posted, you said a good song grows legs and run on, run, a, run on its own. Yes. Uh, yes. How, like how impressed were you with that execution? I mean, I was really happy that it happened. You know what I'm saying? Happy to see Benny, you know, do his thing. Mm-hmm. And just that, you know, even that alone made me think of in the earlier days of my career when it was like records that like, like we gonna make it or something like mm-hmm. that, where they would, you would see mm-hmm. the months and months that it would take. Or it would, and, and I was thinking in my mind of grinding. Mm-hmm. I remember how long they worked. You remember it was yeah, like yeah. four or five months yeah, yeah. and then it took. Yep. And it made, it made, I always realized like a hit record not saying oh though this is a hit record that they made just yeah. saying mm-hmm. i saw the effect of that it was that how it was moving and, oh. I, and i remember my memory of how records move it's like they grow and, yeah. and it's like it's pretty incredible when you see a record like that happen so yeah, I, I was happy for him for that 
I remember hitting you with that. You was like, I was like, what's the sample? You was like, there's no sample. Like, no sample, <laughs> man. There's no samples, man. There's no, no samples, samples on that. No sample. Wow. How'd you do it? You and Khalil helped a little too, Khalil, right? Khalil, yeah. yeah. We just re recreated some magic, basically. Nicky mm -hmm. Greer also um, on the vocals. Was that just to try to challenge yourself? Like, the, you don't have to always. Yeah, you know, sometimes dip. you approach that obstacle, you know, yeah. and, and, and you work your way around it, but um, never to like destroy the integrity of a record. Like yeah. I'll probably take the L if it didn't come out right. Like mm. let's just lose the record, you know. And that's happened before too. Yeah. Was that you your know? first time working with J. Cole? We did a song called Gladiator a long time ago. B -B, Him and B -B. Right? Yeah. yeah. B -B. Like oh. way it was like a mixtape time. But right. yeah, that was like the first time. But yeah, he, he had come by a couple of times prior yeah. to that to the studio and we chopped it up. But yeah, that I like was the way you guys sound together, man. You got the yeah, who knows? You know what I'm saying? Who knows? Pick <laughs> up the phone, Jermaine. You know what I mean? <laughs> 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 that in May, we heard you on Kendrick Lamar's album, Mr. Morale and the Big Steppers. How did We Cry Together land on that project? We had that record for a minute. Really? I, like before the pandemic. Mm. We, we, we had linked and I gave him a batch of beats. And uh, I, I knew that he had worked on it, but I didn't hear the song at first. Mm. And then time kind of went, but they said, yo, that's a keeper. Mm -hmm. And you know how things go. We all make a lot of music and you know years had passed. And I remember keeping in touch with Dave. Or whoever at, over there like you and they were like nah nah it's it, it, it's in the mix it's it's mm. it's not going anywhere yeah and i didn't really get to hear it yet so i didn't know what it was but mm. i guess the, the record like like that type of record i guess was something you know when yeah. you got a guy like dot he's probably making a hundred songs and i was like ah this ain't yeah. gonna make it you know he's mm. gonna make some new hot shit and, yeah, yeah but it stuck and mm. then later on before we mix it, I got to hear the record, and I was like, damn. Yeah, I was gonna think, what was your reaction when you hear so much going on? It's like, it, did it remind you a little of the RZA domestic violence record or I mean, things like that? a little something, yeah, you yeah. know what I'm saying? Then I think people had touched on, yeah. I mean, the way he did it was so unique mm -hmm. that I think yeah. it, that it, and it, it was so poignant, you know, and like strong. That it, when I heard it, I was just like, okay, I see why it was staying on the record, because it was crazy one of those records really that crazy yeah. they must have built around it. Yeah. I don't know when any of the records, because you know, with that, I wasn't in the studio when yeah. he recorded it, but um, yeah, I was really happy with how it came I out. I know you had a strong connection also the last time when you did Fear for the album, you had lost, lost your father at that yeah. time, and that was like an important thing to like, yes. kind of keep you going and keep, keep it you did. up. It did, yeah. it gave me a lot of strength, and I always told him that, and so that record was like close to me, you know what I mean? Yeah. But I, to be able to show beats to a person like him and, and you know, still be this far in the game doing the music I'm doing, I'm, I'm just happy. And, I feel like I could get better. Mm. So that's why I still, they're like, why you still do that? I, I still enjoy it. I feel like we're turning a corner. Like even, you know, yeah. bringing it back to this project. Of course. I feel like this is where we need to be as far as how the music sounds. And that's yeah. why I said like, he wouldn't have, he had to come to where he is to write that song, mm. Elephant Man's Bones, and I'm hiding from the mirror. And certain things you have to live through experience. This album is like, it's cold. Yeah. But, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. it, it's cold, but it, it's also like, uh, it's hard for me to explain it, but it, it, in a way, it's like emotional. Yeah, like this, I've actually yeah. cried a couple times listening to this wow. shit, like dead ass, like damn, not like tears, but just like you know how you get emotional and don't know why. Yeah, mm -hmm. I'm like because I felt like it was a long time that we put into making this shit. So, yeah, right. like, how do you feel? How do you feel when you heard, listen back on the album? What comes to your mind? Um, when I'm when I finish albums, I'm kind of like done with them at mm -hmm. that point. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I'm yeah. like, I'm, cause I'm still recording. I got so much shit to do. I can't just like really sit and enjoy. I'm enjoying them while I'm making them. Mm. So by the time the people heard each song, I've heard each song a thousand times. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like I've heard each song a thousand times. I'm, I'm, I'm actually way. writing them. So it's like, yeah, so. But yeah, when we when we uh, finished it and I heard the full body of work together, yeah. the way Al put it together, I was like, oh yeah, this is like this is it. Yeah. I'm like, we going to the Grammys, baby. <laughs> <laughs> like, we going to the Grammys, baby. And get a suit. Time to go get some. Time to get fitted for some tuxes, man. Yeah. What well, movie you show a lot of love to uh, Big Daddy Kane on the album? He gets a lot of love. I mean. What's not to love about Kane? Right. You know what I'm saying. <laughs> what's not to love about Kane? Like. Uh, yeah, you know, I love Big Daddy. That's my era, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's the era I fell in love with hip hop, you know, Big Daddy Kane, Rakim. Right, I was gonna say Rakim is a mm. big inspiration yeah. making this album. Absolutely. In general, mm. like we, I was looking up a lot of Absolutely. old and videos. Absolutely, every album for yeah. me, mm. I'm a Rakim yeah. baby. Yeah, yeah. it's you know funny you say Rakim, cause mm -hmm. I was thinking big, cause I was noticing like on mm -hmm. the end of Think Big, mm -hmm. you know, you say you're challenging big with the spiritual, without Chandler, the spiritual I'm channeling medium. big without a spiritual meaning. Yeah, medium, I was wondering yeah. how much of an influence he was in general yeah, just making this project. 
you know, I always say Biggie Smalls is the illest. Yeah. Like, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Big is the illest. Like, you know what I'm saying? So, um, yeah, big, big, big is always a, a big, you know, inspiration for me. Like, you know what I'm saying? I get, you know what I'm saying? Like, inspired by Big still to this day. Mm, I yeah. still be listening to his lyrics like. Yeah, how'd he go there? Yeah. You know what I'm <laughs> like, yeah, I can't insane. come behind that now. Yeah. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, right. you know what I mean? Like, for real. Yeah, so, I was thinking yeah. the other day how, like, you know, obviously people try to make the big double album, but, like, it's still hard to beat, like, All Eyes on Me and Life After Death. Like, mm-hmm. as much as people be trying to make big albums and double albums, it's mm-hmm. like, his shit was so hard to beat. simple, too. Mm-hmm. Your heartbeat sound like Sasquatch feet. Thunder <laughs> It's crazy. Shaking the concrete. It was yeah. so simple. I got a theory about that. Part of me. Okay, yeah. I got a theory about that. I feel like, um, obviously, Big and Pac didn't know that they were getting ready to die. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I feel like certain, like, Things are going to happen to you in the studio when you're about to go. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Some wow. of that stuff, I'm like, yo, the spirits was around them brothers. Like, you know what I'm saying? Because it was like, they getting ready to, you know, mm-hmm. we, we just enjoying mm. the music as fans, but they mm-hmm. getting ready to pass over. Right. Wow. So imagine yeah. the energy that's around them and, mm-hmm. and, and how, you know. How they being channeled and, and vesseled, you These know what I'm saying? Being used as a vessel out, right? Yeah, right, before yeah. they go. So yeah. I always had theory about that. Like wow. you can't compete with somebody that's getting ready to check out. Mm. <laughs> Dude, especially if you got talent already. Yeah, you had right. talent, whatever. You already yeah, had talent. That. And a brother's about to like, you know what I'm that's saying? Pass. He about to transition. Just imagine what's going on in the studio or, yeah. or in their spirit. You know what I mean? Yeah. There was a poignant line to me that you had a rock on Stigmata mm-hmm. and said, when you have true inner beauty, no man can remove your jewelry. Like, mm. what inspired that lyric? Mm. Um, you know, um, it's just like something beyond surface. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, if somebody want to take something from you, that surface. Mm. But they still, like, you know, they can't take what what actually attracted these beautiful things to you. It's like if you take somebody's, like, you know, their material, you know, wealth, but they're truly wealthy. They just kind of get it back again. Mm, so that's mm. pretty much what I meant by that. Yeah. yeah. That transparency and that vulnerability is, you know, littered throughout the project. Mm-hmm. Uh, like even on Trillion Cut, you talk about how like your pops had arm track marks from heroin. Like, mm-hmm. was that something you saw growing up, you know, as um, a kid? Yeah. I mean, you know, when, when I got, you know, when I got a little older, I start to notice things later, you know what I'm saying? Like the tracks or whatever, but I didn't see, like, you know, I I didn't grow up with my pops in my crib, mm-hmm. like, you know what I'm saying? For my early years, I moved in with my dad for like a little while, but um, yeah, you just peep stuff later on in life, you know what I'm saying? Like, wow, I didn't even notice that, like, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? But then you get older, like, oh, that's what that is, you mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? Yeah. And also like, you know, you can't talk about a rock Marcy project without you popping your shit, man. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> and I felt that throughout mm-hmm. the project as well. Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. back to Think Big, like mm-hmm. you say, this is my lane, I daddy your DNA. Like, where do you see your influences in other rappers and amongst your peers? Because I hear that a lot. Mm-hmm. Like, rock Marcy started this, mm-hmm. influenced this. Yeah. Um, damn, you just said it pretty much. <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. Um, I think a lot of the stuff that's going on now or whatever, you know, obviously, you know, the stuff I was doing 10 years ago, like, predates a lot of stuff. So, you know, it's just me flexing and having my fun with it. It's like basketball player talking shit on the court. Like, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. I've been busting y'all ass for years. <laughs> it's just that simple shit. Just talking shit. Well, what, what, is it, what does it mean to you? Is like, is this the, the level of, like, uncompromising art, like high-end mm-hmm. underground mm-hmm. hip-hop? Like, the, like, how would you sum up what it what it's sonically or what it sounds like to somebody that may not know mm. um i think it's thinking man music i think we mm. make a lot of we hear a lot of music now that I don't want people to think mm-hmm. or you know it's just That's background true. filler dance clap your ass or whatever which is i I love that too i like you know i love mm. the women and all that shit the yep. party vibe but we also bring something cerebral to the game mm. you know what i'm saying mm. a little a little esoteric in some ways you know what i'm saying so you know, it's pretty much. I'm trying to challenge the. I never want to do what they expect. If, I, if we wanted to be pop- popular, we would just make trap beats and just do mm. everybody else doing. If we mm-hmm. just wanted to, you know, mm-hmm. like be out in there, like you know, what I'm saying, just the most visible artists. 
But, you know, we like to challenge the listeners. Like, I know Al do, too. You mm. know what I'm saying? So that's why it's a perfect combination. But that's what it's about, just challenging the listener. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And underground is like, I think people get it confused where they think, like, our goal is to be under the ground. <laughs> 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 right? Like, yeah. we, we, could, we look at our shit as the best shit mm. that is out. The quality. The so we don't put the, any label on it like it's underground, it's this or that. But I think you're more speaking to the dedication to the craft. Mm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like, when, even sometimes I'll bring up to rock like an old song he did, you know, in a, in a pocket he's rhyming. I said, remember when you was doing it? He'll listen, he, he'll be like, I did that already. There's no reason. And I'll be like, yo, mm. it's yours though. I know everybody mm -hmm. grabbed onto that style and, and did mm. it after you. And But mm. you could do it again. You could take one. But he, he won't do that because it's like, yeah. he explained to me before, it's like, yo, it's not uh, inspiring. Like, I want to blaze new trails. Mm -hmm. It's not about, I want to do something. Every album, if you listen to his shit, it's like, is an update, like he said, right. you know, the mm -hmm. 2.0. Every record, there's, mm -hmm. there's certain nuances. And the yeah. ones that know, know, and it's almost like graffiti. Mm. Like, if you know it, you notice the nuance of yeah. it, somebody else might look at it and go, that I can't tell the difference. That's just a bunch of writing on the mm -hmm. wall. Right. You know what I'm saying? So that's, mm -hmm. I think it's more the dedication to the craft yeah. than wanting to be underground. We look at our shit as right. the best. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah. So, yeah. So when you had that moment like, Freddie, you're nominated for a Grammy, it's like, yes, that's what's supposed to happen. Yeah. Like, Excluding this is, nobody. Yeah, yeah. Respect to everybody. Yeah. I love everybody's mm -hmm. music, but yeah. I feel like what we do is on a certain level. You mm -hmm. said greatness is always the bar, never go below it. Mm -hmm. So at this point, what does greatness <laughs> look like to you? Oh, man. Um, really, greatness is to continue to raise the bar. Like, you know what mm. I'm saying? Like, don't let off of what we're doing. Get better and better at it. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, keep putting numbers up man that's pretty much what it is we just we add no, we in legacy stage right mm. now me and you know <laughs> Al, we in legacy stage so mm. I, that's how i feel like it's just about like beating their head in to the point where they like when you look at the body of work it's like yeah Yo, you can't dispute this man yeah. this mm. is like you know what i'm saying so that's pretty much what it's about for me okay you, know you added on to your legacy rock man with this artist Stove God Cooks, mm -hmm. man. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, I called it one of the best records, <laughs> albums, Reasonable Drought from mm -hmm. the pandemic. Talk about what makes Stove God so.